law enforcement detective, schooled in the military, served our country in uniform, FBI. But I'm going to tell you right now what he's doing. He came here tonight for no fee. He waived the fee to come see you tonight. This is the only place we're going. We're going. So he left Trump Tower. And they flew down here to come to Club 45 to deliver the message. He's traveling the world. And he, it was interesting. He made a comment. There was 12 of you, right? And uh, that are, what an interesting number. Another, another, another guy picked 12 people one time. <laughs> and, uh, and he was talking. He said, hey, yeah, what's up with this? And he said, hey, look, it worked for you. We're going to try it. So uh, he's, he's traveling the country. He's an advisor to the President of the United States. He's a national security uh, intelligence expert. He is traveling around uh, on behalf of the campaign because, once again, just like us, he's a real American patriot. And George is good friends with him. And George, you, know, you want to make some comments? Yeah, well, I have to tell you, he's a great speaker. And the way he supports his traveling is we find his book. It's very important. And his books are unbelievable. I read the first one. I'm reading the second one now, so I would suggest that everybody do that to support him. Come on up, Steve. Yeah. Yeah. Colonel, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to be here today. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. God bless our veterans. God bless our police officers. God bless their spouses. We have a great, great country. Ladies and gentlemen, I was in Atlantic City last week, and I shared with the audience in Atlantic City something that I just began to share, and I'm going to share it with you tonight. Go somewhere along the line, wherever we go, there's a reporter, where there's someone recording what is being said. And they're going to take that back, and they're going to think about, should they use it on the air, or should they not? Well, sure enough, there was a reporter in Atlantic City recording every word I said. But I'm going to answer a question that a lot of reporters have asked me, be it on Fox News or CNN or wherever I go. They always seem, as they did today, as they did today, turn the page back and talk about the president's character. Well, I'm going to share with you something that the mainstream media will never tell you, and this is perhaps the first time that you will ever hear this tonight. I'm going to tell you about President Donald J. Trump's character. I'm going to share with you that when I go to the White House with my wife, and it happened not once, not twice, but three times, all the time, we go and there's a reception for those of us on his campaign advisory board. And we're walking around and we're waiting for the President of the United States and his wife to come down this flight of stairs that is behind a podium like this. To the right is the Army Band, and to the left is the Vice President, and we're all kind of talking and waiting for the President to come and to speak to us. Suddenly, the Army Band begins to play Hail the Chief. And the President of the United States and his wife, Melania, come down behind a podium like this. And she's on his right side. And we're waiting. We're waiting for him to give his opening welcome statement to those of us who have been invited here. And the first thing the president does is this. He says, you know, he says, before we do anything in this house, we pray. Before we do anything in this house, and he pointed his fingers towards the heaven, and he says, we pray to a God Almighty that has abundantly blessed this nation. I know I cannot do this job without his help. Please pray for me. you tonight that the President of the United States has fulfilled his mission to make America great again. So ladies and gentlemen, and especially to the young people who are here this evening, there is a danger that's lurking right over the horizon, a very clear and present danger. We are no longer no longer engaged in a traditional political fight between Republican and Democrat or Democrat and Republican. 
Instead, we are engaged in an ideological war against a monstrous evil called socialism. Yes. I know about socialism. I know it through my wife. My wife was not raised under the stars and stripes. My wife was raised under a red flag with a hammer and a sickle. And when she heard what President Obama was attempting to do with Obamacare, when she hears today what the Democrat socialists and folks make no mistake about it, they're socialists. They right. are socialists. That's right. When she hears what they are trying to do with regard to their socialist agenda, it runs a chill up and down her spine, and she repeatedly says to me, my God, my God, I ran from that. Yes. Stay yes. strong, stay tough, and fight the good fight of faith. Don't let it happen here. Amen. And that's someone who was raised in the Soviet Union. Socialists are all over our country. They're in our colleges. They're in our high schools. They are in our elementary schools. Socialists are on all levels of government. When I heard one of the speakers before talk about, let's get involved in the Board of Education. Let's get involved in our city halls. Let's get involved in our state legislatures and our senates. Let's get involved and elect conservatives. Let's elect Republicans who believe in God and country from school board level to 1,600 Pennsylvania Avenue year in and year. That's how we fight. That's how we do it. I can tell you this, that under the leadership of President Trump, we will bury the damn socialist agenda where it belongs and make it a footnote of American history. It is our duty, ladies and gentlemen, to let the God-given light of liberty and freedom shine so brightly that this shining city on a hill called the United States of America will indeed remain the beacon that will guide future generations of Americans to where? Guide them to where? Guide these young people sitting here tonight to where? Guide the young little infant to where? Guide them to a place called peace. A place called prosperity, a place called home, ladies and gentlemen, a place called the United States of America. An America that we were raised in, an America that we saw these soldiers and sailors and airmen fight for, an America that stands strong not only on the Constitution of the United States, but on the Word of God Almighty. And that comes from 1600 Pennsylvania. Now, I'm bringing some good news today. The good news is this. We are no longer on the defense. We are now on the offense. The Trump campaign is now on the offense. And we're going to bring the fight for this country to every state, to every city, to every town, and to every neighborhood where the damn socialists live. We're bringing it to their doorstep. From Miami to Michigan, from New York to L.A., we the people of this great nation, we have heard a call. You have heard a call. And we're going to make sure that our children and our grandchildren hear the call. And what is that call? That call is to rise. We are rising up to stop a socialist, communist, atheist agenda that has no place anywhere on the United States soil. We're rising up as Asian Americans. We're rising up as Hispanic Americans. We're rising up as African Americans. We're rising up as European Americans and Christian Americans and Jewish Americans. Americans of all faiths, of all backgrounds, of all ethnicities, from every economic income level. We are rising up as a people who are not ashamed to use the word God and country in the same sentence. We're rising up to fight the good fight of faith against a dense socialist party that supports the principles of Marx, of Lenin, of Stalin, that have government controlling the lives of the people. We're rising up to support the Constitution of the United States of America that has the people controlling the government. Amen. We are rising up in opposition to sanctuary cities. 
and in opposition to weak politically correct policing, and we are rising up in support of our law enforcement officers and policies that protect law-abiding citizens. We are rising up to support the constitutional right to bear arms. Ladies and gentlemen, the Second Amendment is not negotiable. We are rising up to protect life from the womb of mothers to the silent graves of the end of their life. We are in support, make no mistake about this, maybe the governor of New York don't like to hear this, maybe the governor of California don't like to hear us, we will rise up on behalf of those who are unborn, they have a right to life. We are rising up as the salt of the earth, and the light of the world that shines with pride. A strength that does what? A strength that bonds God and country and family. It is a sacred, sacred thing when we talk about God and country and family. We're rising up to make sure that that never leaves this land. We're rising up and we're inviting people, inviting people to come here, to come here to Florida and see an America where people are working, where people are paying their way, and using the freedom and liberty that God Almighty has given them to empower their lives, to keep this great country, the land of the free, and the home of the brave. Ladies and gentlemen, those stars and stripes, never in the past, not today, and never in the future, become a symbol of entitlement. It is a symbol of empowerment. For the first time in history, under the leadership of a President of the United States and his name happens to be Donald Trump, minorities across this country, and make no mistake about this, you want to talk about forgotten Americans? It is the minorities of this country who are the true forgotten Americans from decade after decade after decade. They are forgotten no more. Because I've seen it, I've seen it across the country, going into many of the communities. All over America, they have risen up. Their grandfathers, their grandmothers, their aunts, their uncles, their children, their grandchildren, they have risen up and empowered themselves to do what? To build small businesses and to encourage entrepreneurship, leading to record, record unemployment rates, and to walk on a path to a quality of life that they and their children deserve. They have risen up. with President Trump leading the way, we, you and I, we must rise up and continue to expose the dark, destructive agenda of the Dem Socialists. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not a long speaker. I get to the point, and I share with you from my heart, and I share with you from what God Almighty has given me to share with you. But I'm going to ask you to do me a favor. If there is something that I want you to remember it this evening. I want you to remember what I am about to tell you. I want you to remember what I am about to tell you because it will indeed have impact on your life and the life of your children. And this is what I'm going to ask you to do. You're going to leave this great church tonight. And you're going to go home. Tomorrow morning you're going to wake up, you're going to go to work, you're going to go to school. You're going to go to a mall, you're going to go walk somewhere, and in your travels, you're going to see young children playing in a park. Maybe your grandchildren, maybe your children, maybe your niece, maybe your, uh, uh, your, your nieces and, and nephews. You're going to see young people like these college students here, and especially like that young infant. You're going to see them in strollers, in playgrounds. You're going to see them, and I'm going to ask you to do one thing when you see them. Take a good look. Take a good, hard look at that young child in the year 2019. Because 10 or 15 years from now, you're going to run into that young child. 10 or 15 years from now, we're going to run into some of these college students who are here. And they're going to ask you a question. And that question will be this. What did you do, Mom? What did you do, Dad? What did you do, Grandma, Grandpa, Aunt, Uncle, Brother, Sister? 
What did you do in your time so that in my time I could live in a great country called the United States of America? And I want you, I want you to be able to say in my time there are a few things I did. First and foremost, young man, daughter, son, or whoever, first and foremost, I prayed for my country. Secondly, there was a time when a man named Donald Trump was elected president of the United States. And he fought, he led the way, he broke the back of a dark, dark agenda. And I went out, and I not only voted for him, but I campaigned for him. I did my best in my time to make sure that you'll live under stars and stripes, that you would never again see anywhere, perhaps on this planet, a red flag with a hammer and sickle. That you would see the cross, that you would see the Star of David. I did this all in my time, and now, you are charged to rise up and do this in your time. So I leave you with these words of a Republican president named Abraham Lincoln. And I sort of paraphrase it just a little bit to be applicable to our day and our time. Let us do our duty as we understand it. If we do, if we stand together and rise up and move forward with courage, then history, now think about that, then history, ladies and gentlemen. Today, you and I are living in history. Then history will record that we did our best in our time to fight this monstrous evil that we are facing today. And in that fight, we will find victory, a victory that we will carry with us and remember for the rest of of our lives. God bless you. God bless the United States of America.